first of all, uh, thanks so many of you for that were able to make it uh, up on what was that Friday for lunch to meet uh, Pastor Wayne Miller while he was here for his visit. Uh, the invitation was kind of extended to elders and council members and heads of the boards and that kind of thing. So, um, I, I, if you talk to any of the people that were there, I, I have not talked to anybody yet that did not have a positive interaction with the man. Um, I can tell you this from being on the call committee and for the very first time, the, his decision is very painful for him. He's in a congregation that he cares about, that he loves now, and he came here, and I, I, I feel like he really liked what he saw and what he heard from our members and what he saw here in our facility and, and everything else. So uh, I continue to pray for him as, as we hope that he decides to come here. Um, I know that some people at the meeting kind of when we voted to call him were worried and concerned, you know, his wife's from Mobile, why would he come up here? He informed us that he's had five calls in his nine years and a couple have been in that area, I think Birmingham and Atlanta, but he's had several calls back in Illinois or, or Iowa and he told us that they were close to taking a couple of them and there were some issues that, that um, you know, prevented them from, from deciding to come. So he really, it, it, I, I feel like he's more open to the call than maybe I felt like he was going to be. Um, that, that's my personal opinion. I, I don't know that. But I think everybody that talked to him, you know, had a very positive interaction with him. He, he's a very funny guy, uh, very personable. Uh, he sat at dinner with us and 10 of us and knew our names instantly. Um, you know, he... Yeah, he, he's, he, he, he's a very good fit for our church. I mean, I, I can stand here in front of the cross and tell you we called the right man to our church. And so it's just a matter of praying for, for him to, to see that this is the right place for him. You know, I think our, our opportunities to grow here with him would, would be boundless. So uh, keep him in your prayers. Keep his church and, and our church in your prayers. And, and if you got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them later. So, or any of us that were there, I'm sure can. So, uh -huh.
in the sky, you know them by name. You are amazing. <clears throat> We make our beginnings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What is man that you are mindful of him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you for your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, our confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of us. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I can assure all of us that our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance this morning is uh, from Psalm 62. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. Trust in him at all times, O oh people. Pour out your heart before him. God is the refuge for us. Glory be to the God and the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are like clay in your hands. 
Continue by the working of your Holy Spirit to shape and mold us until that day we see him face to face and you see the image of your Son in us. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for... <clears throat> Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, or your <coughs> male servant or your female servant, or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock, or the sower who is within your gates, or that your male servant or your female servant may rest well as you. You shall remember that you were, were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. This is the word of the Lord. Be the epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. What we proclaim is not <coughs> ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord with ourselves as your servant for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our lights to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed always carrying in the body of death of jesus so the life of jesus may also be manifested in our bodies for we live are for who for we who live are always being given over to death for jesus sake so that the life of jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh so death is at work in us but life is in you this is the word of the lord of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second and third chapters. Glory One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields. And as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did? When he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God at the time of Abathar, the high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Here ends the reading of the Gospel.
Please be seated. It is who we are. And uh, Paul writes this great text today, and he tells us that who we are are jars of clay filled with Christ. Interesting thought. You know, we, uh, we often hear people refer to themselves as being a, uh, a self-made man. You know, I made myself, I did it all my own. Sounds a little like Solomon in Ecclesiastes. I tried everything, I did it all, but then he adds, I found that without God it was all meaningless. And so, when we start talking about being self-made, we use the word I a lot. I did this. I can do that. I created this. I, you know, all by myself, I did it. Well, uh, those aren't words that we should particularly be using. We were created by God. We were redeemed by Jesus on the cross and the empty tomb we became part of God's family through the working of the Holy Spirit and baptism. May we always remember our Creator and be the vessels filled for His purpose, jars of clay but filled with Him. Have any of you ever been to Eureka Springs, Arkansas? Did you go to the Passion? <laughs> okay. Uh, they put on a Passion play there. And it's kind of a neat setting. 
it's it's you've you've got a hillside and down at the bottom of the hillside they have done a recreation of uh, what looks like might have been Jerusalem and the the play starts in the late afternoon and and it, it, the sun goes down on the play and it becomes night and it's it, it, they do a great job with it it was years ago when we were there and it's changed i looked it up on the internet and there are other things now that you can do there but there was something that they did when we were there that I'll never forget. They had, um, <clears throat> they had a man on a potter's wheel. He was on a platform that was elevated, and we were seated in a semicircle around him. And the, I think it was called the parables of the potter or something like that. But he, but he talked to us about you know, God's work in, in molding us and informing our lives as he, as he walked through and he was actively working on creating a jar of some kind. What I remember specifically about that day was that as he was working on it, he had his hands and he was working and looking down inside of the pot and he said these words, only the potter sees the heart of the pot. And that's really kind of interesting when you think of it. Only God sees our heart. Um, <clears throat> when you think of, of uh, ourselves being created by the potter's hand, woven together, of course, in our mother's womb, but being woven together by a loving God who sees into our heart. Well, that's kind of where Paul is going today. That's the point that Paul is making today. He's in, a, in this reading, and, and it goes deeper than that. But Paul understood that the real treasure is in Christ, and that he, Paul, was nothing more than the vessel that carried Christ and carried that treasure. We, we understand that, but then if we understand that, his words become a beautiful picture of our lives. Listen again to verse 7. We have this treasure in jars of clay, the Spirit of the Lord working within us. Why? To show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Christ himself told us in, in his words found in John 15, 5, that we can do nothing without him. So, we have a treasure inside of us. And when Paul was writing this story, or these words, he was writing to a world who would have understood the idea of taking treasure and putting it in a clay pot. Or in an unlikely place, certainly, so no one would find it. Have you ever known anybody like that? I was talking the other day to a to a lady who was telling me the story. Uh, there had been a loss, uh, an elderly aunt, I think it was, and she said, you know, in her house there were bookshelves filled with books. So oh, she loved to read. But they knew her. And she also loved to store her treasure where it would be difficult to find and so when they got in the house, they went about the task of taking every book and sorting through every book because she had stashed treasure throughout this library and in old clothes and in old purses and in the occasional odd jar. And so it, it became kind of a game. It was... It was I mean, she wasn't frustrated with the story. The story was, became kind of fun. What are they going to find next? Where will the treasure be? 
next. Um, it's still customary in some parts of the world to hide valuables such as you know money and jewelry and things like that in clay pots in an ordinary clay pot i mean the whole the idea is obvious who in the world would think of looking for a treasure in an old clay pot so who are we what kind of a vessel are we Think of that old chipped and cracked clay pot. I look in the mirror in the morning and I see a figure scarred and wrinkled and old. There exists an assortment of chips and flaws from mistakes that I have made. There are a lot of examples of the things that uh, in my life don't match. I think of the words of Paul when he said, you know, I want to do the things that I should do, but I don't. And, 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 and then I, <clears throat> the things that I want to do or the things that I don't want to, it's just a mess. Couldn't we all tell the same story? Certainly is my story. I don't do the things I want to do and, and the things that I do are things that I shouldn't do. And uh, The most amazing thing about us in our flawed condition is that the treasure that we bear, the Christ that is within us, uh, the flaws in the vessel are... The treasure is not diminished by the flaws in the vessel. Rather, the vessel, us in our flawed condition, are made valuable by the treasure that lies within. So, Paul was excited about the treasure. And at the same time, he encourages that Life had not thrown more at him than he could handle. But if you read quickly through the verses 7 through 10, you could easily focus on words like crushed, perplexed, despair, persecuted, struck down, and it all sounds kind of dismal. And, and then, of course, if we think about the things that Paul went through, you know, we've all, we've all read the stories. Thrown in jail, shipwrecked, bitten by a snake. I had an experience this past week with a snake. Not a pleasant one. I went out to my shed in the back to get out a tractor. I was trimming some bushes and I was going to hook the, one of the tractors up to a trailer and haul the brush away from the bushes. And as I pulled open the door, I saw something on the ground and I went, what in the world? And I lifted the door and it moved. And it headed back in. What I didn't see was that it had wrapped itself around the plow on the front of the tractor and around the engine on the tractor. I didn't see that. I started the tractor. Oh, that was a surprise. That's, that snake came out of that tractor like a, a beeline. And it was only then when I realized, as it went up a, um, a shelving unit that I had, up the wall to where it could get into a crawl space, and it was into the crawl space when the tail was still on the floor. It was over six feet long, and I looked at the cross-section of that body, and it was like this. I do not like snakes. <laughs> I mean, I really just do not. And I did not know there was anything like that living anywhere near I live. I was not impressed. <laughs> I would, you know, talk about heading the other direction. Oh, oh, oh. Um, 
back to Paul. If we think about what Paul experienced, we can imagine Paul being angry. You know, maybe he felt alone. Maybe he was bitter. Maybe simply wanting to hit the door running like I wanted to do when I saw that fool snake. But he wasn't alone. And he didn't give up, and we have to focus on the rest of what Paul said. And we can miss that. He said he was crushed and perplexed, but not driven to despair. He said he was persecuted, but not forsaken. He wasn't alone. He said he was struck down, but not destroyed. Paul was celebrating that even though life had knocked him down, it had not knocked him out. We are God's people. And we are a lot more resilient. We are a lot tougher than we sometimes think. And it's encouraging to think that we can cope with a great deal on the strength of that Christ in us gives us. In my years as a, as a pastor and a hospital chaplain and a grief counselor, I have had the privilege of walking with Christians as they deal with sorrow and tragedy and illness and death and losses of just about every sort. And you just walk with them. That's what you do. And you mostly just listen. You have to do that because they need to tell the story. Uh, you don't preach. Maybe you answer a question a occasionally and you encourage. And then it happens. Just like Paul, they realized that they were never forsaken, that they were never alone, and you begin to see some change. There's a light that begins to shine within them. And then you find them going through some healing as they reach out to help somebody else. You see, they become aware of the treasure that lies within them, Christ who has been there all along, and their hope is renewed, and their joy begins to return, and their purpose is renewed. With that, we return to the opening of what Paul gave us today. I'm going to go back to chapter 5. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servant for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Out of the darkness, out of our brokenness and our wrinkles and our chips and our cracks, out of the trials in our lives, Jesus is there with us, helping us grow and heal, and helping us grow and heal, helping us stand that the life of Christ might be manifested through us. Amen. Please rise to fable as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our offering. Gracious Father, Lord, we, we bring these gifts to you, Father, that you might use them. Use them powerfully, Lord, to bring the light of your presence to a world that needs it. Thank you, Lord. Father, today we pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, you are the God of light and power. You shine upon your creatures and eradicate all darkness that lies within them. Destroy the darkness our sin has caused in our lives. Help us to shine in the light of your grace and your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we, we pray this morning for this church. Father, we we think of, of Pastor Wayne Miller. We are excited, as we have shared, to meet him and to hear his vision and to hear his passion and, and also to understand that he needs to be still and listen and listen for your word, listen for your call. So we pray for we pray for Pastor Miller. We pray for his family. We pray as they listen for your call, as they listen for your voice, as they search for guidance for where they might go. We certainly, Father, pray that he is the one. We thoroughly enjoy our time with him. And so we pray for, we pray for his church as well. If he does take this call, then his church is at a place. And we would pray for that church, for that body of believers, that you would provide for them a new leader in, in his absence, if that is what is to be. And we pray for this church. We are blessed as a congregation. We pray your continued blessings on our ministry here, and, and we look forward to new leadership that can bring us forward. Um, the harvest is plenty. Uh, this church is poised to make a difference in this community, and we believe that, and we stand on that truth. So, Father, lead us and guide us and be with us, Lord, in your mercy. Father, we think of those who are hurting, those who are healing, 
those in our midst who need prayer. We, you know, we think of Linda. We think of we think of Carolyn. We we thank you for the healing that we see in Virginia. We think of Liz. Father, we pray for all in our community and our church that are hurting and names that we don't know, but be with them. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we think of our country this morning, the leadership in our country. We, we are at a time that seems to get crazier by the week. And so we pray for guidance, leadership. We pray that this country might return to a place where our foundation is clearly found in the truth of the scriptures, the values that come from the Judeo-Christian world. Father, help us to place you back at the center of who we are as a nation. Lord, in your mercy. Father, this morning we, we close this prayer. We give you the thanks and praise for, for all that we have, for all that we are, for the church here. And so we close this prayer as we rise and together we pray the words that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our closing song is <clears throat> The Lion and the Lamb.
accept the Lord. 